Welcome everybody to How Fast Will It Go and today we're dealing with the 1997 Mitsubishi GTO now it has 1016 horsepower, 851 pounds feet of torque from a 7 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine and the car itself weighs 3019 pounds came with all wheel drive standard and it still has it and it could do 0 to 16 2.490 seconds and 0 to 104.986 seconds so yeah so far on this series late 90s cars like this have done reasonably well the Nissan R390 and the TVR Cerberus B12 are st uh, still in the top 10 and uh, yeah I have n had no other 90s cars apart from them so uh, yeah I hope this can uh, match those two cars and at least get into the top 10 but yeah it doesn't have the most power I've ever had on this series it even has less than the uh, Celine S5S Raptor from the previous episode which only managed 251 so that does make me uh, a bit concerned but nonetheless let's uh, get out there and see what it can do so yeah at least it had all wheel drive standard which obviously makes this a little bit easier it's obviously not something uh, additional it's having to deal with outside of that much bigger engine with much more power than it had standard. But still, there's 200 mile an hour. Two we get to the end of our rev limit, 247. Oh dear, that corner gets me every time. Let's uh, rewind a little bit, see if we can hold some of the speed that we were carrying before we uh, flew off the uh, bridge. Come on, there we go. 247 is what we've got up to so far. We did hold 185 mile an hour around that corner, so that's okay. 247 mile an hour does not put us in the top 10, unfortunately. Right, so we're going to have to go down the other side of the motorway now to see if we can get any faster. So 247 mile an hour is nowhere near as fast as I was hoping. I was hoping for at least 250. The uh, only other modification outside of the stuff on the underneath, outside of handling and the engine, was the uh, side skirts because uh, that reduced drag by a, a percent, which. You know, a percent is always useful if you're going to be going at least more than 200 mile an hour. Come on, the problem with this is it's a little bit sluggish when we're at this kind of top end speed. And then we've got to deal with traffic and then corners, and uh, yeah, just doesn't seem to have the. Uh, quite the ultimate kind of power to really plough on once we get past a certain point. It's fast enough in 5th gear but once we get into 6th it seems to slow down a little bit. Which may well be this car's undoing because we are struggling to get up to what we were at before. Even more so when F Nissan gets in the way. Come on, take that corner a little bit sharper. Well, that didn't work, did it? Hitting the wall and bounces into the Nissan in the first place. Not useful whatsoever. And then I completely hit it again. God damn it. It's again one of those cars that seem to be uh, infinitely on your driving line. No matter what you try and do, they're always in the way. Yeah, I think 247 is all we're going to get. It's a bit of a shame, but yeah, 247 is our uh, end of the uh, day uh, stop speed, which, you know, it's not the worst that we've had, but for a first time for Mitsubishi being on this series, I would have, uh, you know, liked something at least to hit 250, but 
Unfortunately, that was not meant to be. But yeah, like I said, it's not the slowest set we've had. It's two mile an hour quicker than the Mercedes-Benz SL65 AMG Black Series. Two mile an hour also faster than the Morgan Aero Super Sports. And yeah, eight mile an hour quicker than the Austin Healey 3000 Mark III. But yeah, it's four mile an hour behind the Selene S5 S Raptor, which even that was quite a bit of a disappointment. And uh, yeah, way off the likes of the uh, TVR Serbo and the Nissan R390, which yeah, are around the same age as this. So. Yeah, a little bit disappointed, but at least the car was manageable. It wasn't, you know, all over the place in terms of handling. It was more than capable of dealing with the power and, you know, the speeds that we were going at. It just didn't have that extra bit of oomph to really uh, take it past the 250 mile an hour mark, which is a bit of a shame, but, you know, could have been worse. And, uh, yeah, could have been a lot more of a hassle to drive, which it wasn't really. It was probably one of the easiest cars we've had on this series to drive, quite frankly, so there is that going for it. But, yeah. Just a bit of a shame that it wasn't that little bit extra in terms of speed. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.